The Shadow Within, Part 2 Jack stood inconspicuously at the corner of a bustling street, his deep-set brown eyes veiled behind the dark lenses of his sunglasses. He observed the passers-by with an air of detachment, yet his gaze was fixed on one in particular, Sarah. She moved with a purposeful stride, her short brown hair bouncing with each step, her blue eyes reflecting the midday sun like shards of sapphire. Jack savored the sight of her, the way she navigated the world alone with a resilience that only solitude could hone. Beautiful day, isn't it? He murmured to no one, a smile curling the edges of his lips, a gesture unnoticed by the throngs of people around him, wrapped up in their own lives, unaware of the predator in their midst. Jack's obsession with Sarah had grown roots deep within the darkest part of his soul. He knew her schedule better than she did herself, from her morning jogs around the park to her quiet evenings spent reading by the dim light of her living room lamp. He found himself whispering her routines under his breath as if they were verses of some twisted prayer. 7.15 a.m., the alarm buzzes. 7.45, she pours black coffee into a chipped mug, he thought, recalling the intimate details of her existence. 8.30, she locks her door, double-checks, always double-checks. How endearing. He had watched her enough to know the precise moment she would leave Pad Thai, her favorite restaurant, every Saturday afternoon. Today was no exception. His heart raced with anticipation, feeling closer to her with each second that passed, though yards of concrete and crowds separated them. Today might be the day I formally introduce myself, Jack contemplated, his mind teetering on the edge of action. But the fantasy of meeting was not driven by a desire for connection. It was darker, more sinister. Soon, Sarah, you won't have to bear this life's relentless weight. I'll free you from it all. The shadows cast by the high buildings seemed to dance around him, a visual echo of the darkness that swirled within. Jack imagined Sarah's life untethered from the mundane, her spirit freed by his hand. An intoxicating mix of power and empathy surged through him as he prepared to close the distance between hunter and prey. Excuse me, he would say, feigning surprise when their paths crossed. Haven't we met before? The words felt smooth, natural, even as his pulse quickened with the thrill of the hunt. Yet, unbeknownst to Jack, there was another presence observing the scene, a swirling mass of darkness that clung to him like a shroud, a presence nobody could see, a harbinger of a death that would unravel the fabric of both their worlds. But for now, Jack remained oblivious, consumed by his fixation and the tantalizing prospect of his desires made manifest. Sarah pressed the last forkful of drunken noodles to her lips, the perfect amount of spice mingling with the savory flavors that made Pad Thai her midday sanctuary. She relished the comforting ritual, the way the meal seemed to reset the rhythm of her solitary existence. With a contented sigh, she leaned back against the booth's red vinyl seat, her piercing blue eyes scanning the small restaurant for the last time before braving the bustling world outside. Check, please, she called out, her voice steady despite the undercurrent of watchfulness that always accompanied her in public spaces. While waiting, her gaze drifted to the window where reflections melded with the street scene, a dance of silhouettes and faces. Among them, one silhouette stood out, a man of average build with short, black hair, his deep-set brown eyes catching the light as he moved. He looked ordinary, but something about him snagged on the fabric of her attention, he seemed familiar. Here you go Sarah the waitress smiled, snapping Sarah from her reverie as she handed over the check. Thanks, Amy, Sarah replied, offering a small smile as she slipped cash into the leather folder. She gathered her jacket and bag, sliding out of the booth with the grace of one accustomed to moving unseen. Stepping out of the restaurant, the city's hum wrapped around, familiar yet filled with hidden currents. As she turned to close the door, she nearly collided with the man from the window, Jack Hartman, though she didn't know his name. Oops, sorry, Sarah stammered, instinctively stepping back, her heart skipping a beat. No harm done, Jack said smoothly, his voice betraying nothing of the inner turmoil that raged beneath his charming exterior. His gaze flickered over her face, a hunter assessing his quarry. For a moment, Sarah's breath stopped, her senses tingling with a prickly unease. Then she noticed it, the strange occurrence that had no place in the bright light of day. A swirling mass of darkness seemed to coil in in and out of Jack's entire body, an ethereal shroud that twisted and writhed like smoke without a source. Are you okay? She found herself asking, curiosity wrestling with the alarm bell clanging in her mind. Perfectly fine, thanks Jack replied curtly, rushing past her with a haste that hinted at urgency or fear. 
Sarah watched him stride away, the bizarre shadow trailing in his wake. She shook her head slightly, trying to dispel the vision, but it clung stubbornly to the edges of her perception. Maybe those noodles were spicier than I thought she said to herself, laughing at the thought of seeing something so strange. Where have I seen him before? She murmured to herself, biting her lip in concentration. Snippets of memory flickered through her mind, a glimpse of someone in the grocery store, a figure walking past her house late at night, the stranger who seemed to appear wherever she went. Could it be? The thought trailed off as realization dawned, icy fingers of recognition crawling up her spine. The familiarity of Jack's presence was not coincidence, it was pattern, repetition, someone orbiting her life with the precision of a satellite. Out of curiosity, Sarah hesitantly walked in the direction Jack had gone. Questions bubbled inside her, each one laced with a sharp edge of necessity. Who was this man? Why did he look at her as if he knew her? And what was that unnerving darkness that only she seemed able to see? Maybe I'm going crazy, she whispered to herself, a half-hearted attempt to laugh off the unease that gripped her. But deep down, Sarah knew better than to ignore the silent warnings of her intuition. Something was deeply wrong, and whether it was madness or mystery, she felt compelled to unravel the truth. After catching up with the jack, excuse me she called out, her voice betraying a tremor she had not intended. He paused, an almost imperceptible frown creasing his brow as he turned to face her. Do I know you? His tone was polite, yet distant, as if he were addressing a stranger asking for the time. I'm Sarah, she replied, closing the gap between them with determined strides. Sarah Livingston. From the neighborhood. Ah, Pei Jack's smile did not reach his eyes. Sorry, you look familiar for a moment there. I'm Jack, what can I do for you? Um. She hesitated, her gaze flicking to the dark entity caressing the air around him. Did she dare mention it? Could he be aware of its presence? There's something weird. On you. The words tumbled out before she could stop them. On me? His eyebrows arched, amusement threaded with confusion. Like a wart, or my clothes? More like a shadow, she said, her voice dropping to a whisper, even though she doubted anyone else could see the darkness. A darkness. It's all around you, going in and out of you. Is this some kind of joke? He chuckled, but there was a sharpness to it, a deflection. No, I'm serious. It's there, right now. She pointed, her finger trembling slightly in the afternoon light. Look, Sarah, it was a pleaser meeting you, but I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Jack's demeanor shifted, the charm evaporating as quickly as it appeared. I've got places to be. Please, just listen. Desperation edged into her voice as she reached out to grab his arm, only to grasp empty air as the shadow recoiled from her touch, slipping around him protectively. Enough. Jack's command sliced through the tension. You need help, but not the kind I can give. Goodbye, Sarah. And with that, he strode off, leaving her standing alone, the shapeless terror retreating with him. Am I the only one who sees? She murmured, watching his departing form. Her heart pounded, a mix of dread and intrigue churning within her. Why did this omen of darkness choose him? And why was she privy to its existence? Her rational mind screamed at her to let it go, to chalk it up to stress or overwork. Yet, the piercing blue of her eyes reflected a deeper knowledge, a certainty that this was more than mere hallucination. Who are you, Jack? She whispered, her thoughts racing as she stared after him. And what binds you to that? Thing? The questions clawed at her consciousness, demanding attention, igniting a resolve within her. As he disappeared around a corner, the last tendrils of the shadow merging with the shadows of the city, Sarah knew she could not let this go. Curiosity had always been her compass in the solitude of her life, and now it pointed unwaveringly toward the enigma that was Jack and the shrouded terror that clung to him. Sarah lingered at the edge of the park, her gaze fixed on Jack as he wandered aimlessly along the gravel path that wound like a serpent through the greenery. The midday sun cast long shadows from the trees, but none so dark or sentient as the one attached to him, a living, breathing absence of light that clung to his every step. Unseen by passers-by, it seemed a malevolent guardian to Sarah's piercing blue eyes, which tracked its every move. Do you feel it, Jack? Does it whisper to you? She muttered under her breath, the words dissipating into the crisp autumn air. Jack paused, rubbing his temples with a weariness that spoke of sleepless nights and tormented thoughts. He glanced around as if sensing a presence, 
but his brown eyes saw only the mundane world around him. Sarah could see the strain etched into his features, the once charming smile now a distant memory. Lost again, Jack? She said softly, though he was too far to hear. Since that night, he had been adrift in his own reality, time slipping through his fingers like water. Minutes stretched into hours unaccounted for, leaving behind only fatigue and the chilling touch of impending doom. Watch out. A jogger's voice cut the air, followed by a brief exchange of apologies as Jack stumbled into his path. The shadow being seemed to ripple with amusement, tendrils of darkness momentarily reaching towards the unsuspecting man before retracting. Are you all right, sir? The jogger asked, concern lacing his voice. Fine, Jack replied curtly, brushing off the encounter with a forced smile. Just. Lost in thought. Sarah watched her heart pounding in erratic rhythm against her chest. She catalogued every detail of Jack's interactions, searching for clues about the shadow that appeared tethered to him. Lost in thought or lost in another world? She pondered. Her own thoughts echoed with echoes of loneliness, a familiar companion in her solitary life, but also a determination to unravel this mystery. Time isn't your ally, is it Jack? She continued her silent interrogation, noting how he would check his watch, frown, and shake his head, as though trying to piece together the fragments of his fractured day. Neither is that thing, whatever it is. Sarah's voice was a whisper, eyes narrowing as she observed the shadow being. It seemed to pulsate with Jack's confusion, thriving on his disorientation. As Jack moved on, heading out of the park with hurried steps, Sarah trailed at a safe distance. She could not shake the feeling that the answers she sought were woven into the fabric of Jack's unraveling sanity. The scent of fear was almost palpable, a pungent trail left in his wake that only deepened her resolve. Who are you really, Jack? And what kind of monster calls you home? Her questions hung unanswered in the space between them, a bridge over an abyss that she found herself compelled to cross. Something is coming, she whispered to herself, a premonition winding its way through her consciousness. She knew she was stepping into a world where only shadows danced, and yet, she felt an inexplicable pull towards the truth, no matter how horrific it may be. Sarah's fingers curled around the warm ceramic of her coffee cup, the steam curling like whispers into the cool air of the Lazy Cow Cafe. It was a routine refuge, a place where she could lose herself among the clatter of dishes and the murmur of conversation. But today, routine had been usurped by the uncanny, the sense that fate had once again steered her towards Jack. He sat a few tables over, his presence an intrusion in her sanctuary. She observed him over the rim of her cup, pretending to be engrossed in the book laid out before her. His movements were mechanical, as if each gesture were a well-rehearsed part of a play, he had grown tired of performing. Yet there was no trace of the shadow that seemed to cling to him elsewhere. Can I get you anything else? The barista's voice jolted Sarah from her watch, and she offered a practiced smile. No, thank you, she murmured eyes never leaving Jack. He had not ordered anything since arriving, and his gaze flitted around the room with a skittish energy that belied his outward calm. Refills on the house if you change your mind. Appreciated. Her response was automatic, thoughts churning with a blend of intrigue and concern. Why here? Why now? Jack rose abruptly, tossing a crumpled napkin onto the table. Sarah's pulse quickened, the hunt was on. She counted to thirty, then gathered her things with feigned nonchalance. Outside, the city breathed its midday sigh, and Sarah fell into step behind Jack, keeping a discreet distance. To any casual observer, she would appear just another pedestrian navigating the crowded sidewalks. Stay invisible, she coached herself internally, weaving through the throng. He can't know you're following. She watched as Jack paused at intersections, seeming disoriented, casting furtive glances over his shoulder. Was he aware of her, or was it paranoia spawned by whatever darkness haunted him? Whispers of unease rustled through her mind like wind through dry leaves. Where are you going, Jack? She wondered silently. And what are you running from? The journey led them through the city's veins, past storefronts reflecting their distorted silhouettes. Sarah catalogued every detail, the way he avoided eye contact, the slight tremor in his hands, the weary slump of his shoulders. Is it fear, or something else? The question lingered, unanswered, as she maintained her vigil. What secrets do you carry in your shadow? Jack turned into a residential street, and the buildings swallowed them in their quietude. Here, 
Sarah could almost hear the thud of her own heart, a clock ticking down to an inevitable confrontation. Almost home, Jack. She mused, her inner voice tinged with trepidation. Or is home just another cage for what torments you? He fumbled with his keys at the door, shoulders hunched as if expecting, or perhaps hoping, for the shadow to descend upon him. That swirling mass remained conspicuously absent, but Sarah knew it was only biding its time, lurking in some unseen corner of reality. Does it ever let you rest? She pondered, hiding in the shadow of a nearby alley as Jack disappeared inside. Or does it keep you awake, whispering its dark lullabies? She shivered despite herself, knowing that whatever truth lay within Jack's realm, it was one she could not turn away from. Tomorrow, Jack, she vowed, her determination hardening like steel beneath her skin. Now I know where you live, I'll find out what you're hiding, and whatever comes with it. Sarah crouched behind the tattered drapes of her living room window, her eyes tracing the path she had followed Jack down just hours before. The moon cast a pale glow over the quiet street, turning everything into a monochromatic dreamscape. Her mind replayed the scene, the strange pull of curiosity entwined with the visceral fear that clawed at her insides. Am I really considering this? She whispered to the empty room, her voice quivering like a plucked string. To step into someone else's problems, their darkness. Her gaze fell upon her own reflection in the glass, a spectral figure, haunted by the possibility of what lurked beyond the veil of normalcy. The shadow she had seen was not only wrapping around Jack but seemed to be weaving its tendrils through the very fabric of her thoughts. Only madness lies that way, she muttered, pulling away from the window with a shudder. But even as she sat in the safety of her home, a part of her longed for the excitement of secretly following Jack today and investigating what weird story Jack's life has to tell. Meanwhile, Jack sat alone in the dim light of his scarcely furnished apartment, his hands trembling slightly as they gripped the edges of his coffee table. His eyes were unfocused, staring at something far beyond the confines of his walls. Visions of a monstrous world. Hideous beasts, unimaginable by the human mind. Rivers that ran red as blood, fire erupting spontaneously from the ground, like geysers shooting towards the sky. Suddenly, he jerked forward, gasping for air as if he had been drowning in the visions that besieged him. W.H. What time is it? His voice was hoarse, barely above a whisper. He glanced at the clock on the wall, it was three hours later than he last remembered. How? The vision only lasted seconds? The afterimages of those otherworldly beasts still clawed at the edges of his perception, their grotesque forms more terrifying than anything concocted by human nightmares. Every encounter with the thinning veil between worlds left him more drained, more fractured. Stay out of my head, he growled pressing his palms into his temples as if he could physically push the horrific sights from his mind. Sarah's resolve wavered as she settled into her armchair, wrapping her arms around herself. The risk of descending into the unknown was intense, yet the pull of the unknown, the need to understand, was almost irresistible. Jack, she said, testing the name on her lips, what have you seen? Her thoughts collided with the image of Jack's tormented expression when he brushed past her outside the restaurant. It was a look of a man who had glimpsed hell and could not escape its grasp. Can I even help him? The question hung in the air, unanswered. The risk of becoming ensnared in another person's troubles was real, palpable. But so was the chance to unravel the enigma that was Jack and the shadow that seemed to claim him. Who are you really, Jack? Sarah breathed out, her blue eyes hardening with resolve. And what is this darkness that follows you? She knew that the answers might well come at a cost, but the mystery was a siren call she found impossible to ignore. With each passing moment, the line between hunter and hunted, observer and participant, blurred ever so slightly, a dangerous game of cat and mouse where roles could reverse in the blink of an eye. Tomorrow, she vowed, a single word filled with both promise and dread. I'll find out. From across the street, Sarah saw Jack stumble down a dark alley, his breath rasping in his throat, barely standing. Around him, the air was thick with a stench that seemed to seep into his very bones, a fetid combination of decay and brimstone. The cacophony of snarls and guttural roars echoed off the grimy walls, as if the city itself had become a gateway to something primordial and vile. Continue the story with Part 3. Don't forget to like and subscribe.